Okay, if you followed mainstream media, if you followed the polls, you were told that this race was going to be super, super close. But the reality actually is, is that Trump won in a landslide. And there were a lot of clues out there on podcasts, on X, in independent media that was pointing to this outcome. And this is something I actually predicted on X the day before the election. I went through all the different data points to really understand why Trump was gonna win the election and everything in that post turned out to be exactly correct. And I'm gonna bet that no one in legacy media and mainstream media and mass media is gonna talk about any of these variables because it requires looking at the whole picture in a very different way. And what's funny is that we'll actually start by analyzing the polls. The same polls we know have been incorrect and inaccurate for the last three elections. We can actually use that trend to predict how they're gonna perform in 2024. And so if we go to my post on X, my prediction was Trump was gonna win by a lot and that the election will be over by Wednesday morning, which is exactly what happened. And the first reason was that Trump was outperforming versus 2016 and 2020 in every single consequential poll that was run and Harris is performing worse than either Biden or Clinton did. And we can see this very, very clearly. This is one day before the election. This is from Real Clear Politics, which is an aggregate of all the different polls. All you have to do is compare 2016 to 2020. You can see a lot of Clinton. You can see a lot of Biden in 2020. But Trump was winning in almost every single battleground state. And in the ones that he was in, Harris was winning by a much smaller margin than either Biden or Clinton in 2016 or 2020. So f Michigan, as an example, which Trump ended up winning. I don't know if they called it yet, but it's basically a done conclusion here that Trump's going to win that state. Harris was only polling at 0.6, whereas Biden was pulling at 5.1 and Clinton was pulling at 3.6. Or in Wisconsin, where Harris was pulling at 0.4 and Biden was pulling at 6.7 and Clinton was pulling at 6.5. So even in the states where Harris was being called to win, she was dramatically underperforming both Biden and Clinton. And so my conclusion was it is highly unlikely pollsters have been able to adjust for Trump's overperformance versus polls that occurred in both 2016 and 2020. They had a shot to do it in 2020 and failed. And since 2020, we've had the fallout from COVID, two assassination attempts, two wars, a Democrat president with cognitive decline that was covered up by the party, a replacement that bypassed the primary process, the purchase and freeing up of X altering the media landscape, and one side embracing the largest long-form podcasts in the world, specifically Trump going on Rogan, Flagrant, etc., etc. I have very little faith pollsters have been able to adjust their representative targets to account for the shifts that these events will undoubtedly cause. And in short, Trump is already better than Harris in most polls that matter, and he will very likely do even better. And that's exactly, that is exactly what happened. And we can prove this out very quickly. Wisconsin. Harris 0.4 was the average. And if we go to the Bloomberg map, which was freaking awesome, and we click on Wisconsin, it's at 99% reported. Donald Trump is winning by a point. So that was wrong. And what's even more interesting is we can look at the shifts from 2020 to 2024. These cones on the screen represent which party has an advantage versus 2020. So this in price counting means that the Republicans have an advantage versus 2020, meaning that they got more votes in 2024 relative to 2020. And the size of the cone, the height of the cone is by how much. And you can see in the entire state, Trump vastly outperformed 2020. He got a lot more votes in basically every county than he did in 2020. Whereas Kamala Harris was only able to do that in like five different counties. We can do the same thing in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania had a very, very, very slight lead 0.3, which is a very, very small margin of victory. Trump ended up winning it 50 to 48. And again, if we look at the same exact shift, Massive overperformance by Trump year over year. And you can do the same exact thing for every single other battleground state. But what's even more striking is if we switch to that cone view for the whole nation and we look at the, how the entire nation performed year over year, the way Trump got the vote out in 2024 is unprecedented. About 80 to 90 percent of the counties on the, on the screen that are shown right now. And these are counties that reported over 95% of the vote, so these are basically done deal counties, call it, they all voted way more for Trump than in 2020. And so the question becomes why? If the polls were going to tell us how close it was going to be, but we could use the trend of how wrong they've been year over year to predict that outcome, the question becomes why did it actually happen? And the one key data point I used to really understand that trend was the party affiliation trends from Gallup. Republican party affiliation is the best it's been since 1992, with Democrats essentially losing their party affiliation margin 
This is even after the wake of January 6 and Roe v. Wade. And so what this chart here shows, this is from Gallup. Gallup is one of the actual good pollsters out there. Shout out Gallup. So this line, these lines show how much of an advantage Democrats have in any given election year. So for example, in 1992 here, when uh, Bill Clinton ran for his first uh, term, you can see that there was a 10 point Democrat affiliation advantage, meaning that there were uh, 10 percentage points more Democrats than there were Republicans. And you can see in every single year, 1996, 10 points, 2000, 11 points, 2004, 5 points, 2008, 3 points, 2012, 7 points, right? 16, 3, 2024. But the big difference in 2024 is that the Democrat advantage in party affiliation was gone. It was at one at the end of the election year, but you can see this sort of line right here where it's even. Republicans often were gaining the advantage from a party affiliation perspective. There were more people that affiliated or considered themselves Republican or Republican leaning than in past elections. And the reason why that's so important is the following. This means that Trump winning the national vote is a legitimate possibility, which will all but guarantee winning the electoral college, and again, this is why this happened, right? This is why this happened. And that's why, as, as of the count right now, and New York Times and other places are predicting Trump to win the national vote, okay? Trump has 72 million votes to Harris's 67 million. Trump will be the first Republican president since 2004 that won the national vote. Not just the Electoral College, the national vote. There has been instances in the past where a Republican will lose the national vote, but they'll win the Electoral College. If Trump was on track to win the national vote, he would for sure win the Electoral College because of how people are spread out across the state, the demographics, people's belief systems. If people turn out to vote for Republican and they win the national vote, it's basically guaranteed they're going to win the Electoral College. And that was the exact trend that Gallup was showing on the partisan advantage. And it came out to be true. And so now the question becomes why, right? Why would people shift to the Republican Party away from the Democrats in 2024? And it became very, very obvious. Again, shout out Gallup for showing us this graph, which is economic confidence. The economic confidence of the country is at the lowest level since the 2008 Great Recession. And you can see this on this chart. So this up here is the 2024 election. You can see that the economic confidence is minus 26, which basically means that there's significantly more people that are dissatisfied with the economy than they are satisfied. In 2000, it was basically even. People were equally satisfied and dissatisfied. Same thing in 2016. 2012, they were slightly less satisfied, less confident. But in 2008, understandably so, people were distraught with the economy because we had the Great Recession. It was at minus 60 or something. 2024, the economic confidence of the country was the lowest level since the Great Recession. And on top of that, Kamala has done next to nothing to separate herself from Biden. She had that very famous quote from The View where she was asked, what would you do different than Joe Biden? And she said, literally for word for word, nothing comes to mind. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. Literally said nothing comes to mind when this trend was happening. This was obvious as day. People are hurting from inflation and they did not recognize that. They somehow ignored it. It was wild to hear her say that. And as wholly incapable of verbalizing Kamala is, what she would do differently or what mistakes she has made. On top of this, the economy is the number one issue amongst all voters. Why would they reelect the vice president of the U.S. when they think her administration has done the poorest job since the Great Recession? And in hindsight, this is so obvious. People's top topics in every single election, almost every single election, is the economy. If the economy is bad, you're not going to get reelected. Simple as that. And Kamala was the sitting vice president, or still is the sitting vice president. She's still in office with Biden. How do you expect the people to vote for you when you have done nothing to separate yourself from this terrible trend? Regardless of what the numbers are, if the population is not confident in the economy, you're not going to get reelected. And again, that's why we have this, this crazy shift towards the right. And this last one is one that no one in the mainstream media is going to talk about for sure, for sure because it speaks to a broader trend, something that has been happening in culture and the zeitgeist. 
that it's impossible for mainstream media to capture because it goes directly against their ability to stay in business. And that is the flight away from legacy media, which is primarily, and I hate to say this, it's primarily a left-leaning media source. It's not fair. There's been a flight away from legacy media by independents and Republicans, but independents for sure, because they make up the largest voting block in the country, which is 50%. That's something people forget. People think it's like, it's evenly split Democrat and Republican. This is not true. A quarter of the country is Republican. A quarter of the country is Democrat. The other half of the country, the 50%, the biggest voting bloc by far, is independent. They don't have a party affiliation. They're not married to party. They select the political candidates that best suit their needs for that election cycle. And 50% of the country, the independents, which is this dotted line here, okay, since 1976, where 75% of the independents in this country had a great deal or fair amount of trust in mass media, this has fallen off a cliff all the way down to 27% in 2024. This means that by default, the biggest voting bloc in the United States, 50% of the country, is not getting their news and information from mass media, a heavily left-leaning media source, which also explains why Democrat-leaning people, still, the majority of them, have a great deal or fair amount of trust in the media. 54, still kind of falling off the cliff since 2020, but 54, significantly more independent and conservatives. I wonder why that is. Probably because the media they consume is tailored to them, right? And so they think they trust it, but in reality, they're just being fed propaganda, to be completely, and I hate to say it, but they are. In a lot of cases, they're being fed propaganda. With X and long-form podcasts painting a more favorable and fair picture of Trump and his campaign, it will enable the Trump admin to convey their message to the masses in a much more direct and fair manner, reaching millions more than they could have in past elections. This is in stark contrast to the Harris campaign, which with the help of legacy media has been trying to propagandize a large swath of the public into thinking Trump is the second coming of, mm, I won't say the word, I don't want to get it demonetized. Oh yeah, and if you're enjoying it, like, subscribe, support, description, wow, professional YouTuber, check that out. But with alternate independent media, many have woken up to the lies that have been spread and instead will much more closely look at each campaign and what they stand for. And it will become obvious that Harris and her campaign are obsessed with vilifying Trump instead of offering an alternative to Biden, whereas the Trump campaign has done a significantly better job at outlining what they would do differently. And on top of this, and this is a very important point that went completely unnoticed up until hopefully now, the people that Trump has surrounded himself with are non-traditional candidates that the country has been clamoring for. The Harris campaign is more of the same. They're a system party. This election doesn't feel like one where the public wants more of the same. It feels like an election where the public is ready to close a book and start fresh. Trump gives a better chance for that outcome, and that's why I think he wins in a landslide. And thus, that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. And if you really want to capture that trend, all you have to do is analyze how the Trump campaign has leveraged podcasts, specifically Joe Rogan, the largest podcaster in the world, which ended up endorsing Trump the night before the election. And so think about this for a second. Joe Rogan, the largest podcaster in the world and lifelong liberal, if you follow Joe Rogan, you know exactly what I'm talking about, went from going out of his way to not platform Trump to endorsing him in one election cycle. Democrats need to take a hard look in the mirror and ask themselves why this is. That move encapsulates what has happened in the last four years. People are sick and tired of mainstream media. People are sick and tired of being lied to. They're flying to independent sources. They're flying to places like X, where it's a lot more neutral. It's still filled with, with garbage, okay? But it's way better than the constant propaganda and garbage, straight garbage, that most legacy media companies have put on the public. And the public has answered. They said, no more, no more. I don't care what you're telling me about that other candidate, this Trump guy, you lied, you're always lying, and I'm sick and tired of it. 
I'm not going to continue to pretend our president is not missing, right? That he's been mentally destroyed (laughs) for the last three and a half years and you try to cover it up and then you replace him with the least popular candidate of all time without a primary and then you expect people to turn out to vote for her? No, that's not going to happen. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. That people will revolt. (laughs) America is literally a country of uh, founded on the concept of going against the establishment, okay? And it's become very, 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 very obvious that the Democrats were the establishment party, especially in this cycle, and Trump represented something much different. And one last thing I want to show you before I forget. I stopped recording the video, and then I remember this tweet, this post, whatever you want to call it. Please don't throw me in jail for calling it a tweet, okay? Look at how Washington, D.C. voted. This is Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, not a state, okay? It's, It's a district. My apologies. Look at those results, okay? 92% of the electorate in Washington, D.C. voted for Kamala Harris. Washington, D.C. is the most partisan district state, whatever you want to call it, in the entire country by a long shot. And it's our nation's capital. Why is one candidate getting so much support from the residents of our nation's capital? This makes no sense unless you buy the argument that the system is corrupt. And that is why, again, the people said no more. No more. And that is why the people overwhelmingly voted for Trump to the point where he won the national vote. If you found this video helpful, make sure you share it with your friends, family, like and subscribe if you want to support the channel. I have links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching.